Hi there, this is Hans from Siegecraft Electronics, and today I'll be showing you some of the various diagnostic tools that I offer for Williams Solid State Pinball Machines. What I offer primarily covers the System 3 era all the way to the end of WPC95, which is the majority of solid state pins that Williams manufactured over the years. On the bench today I have a System 6 board set here, which was recently repaired, running the Firepower software. And we'll be stepping through the various uh, processes I use with these diagnostic tools to evaluate a board, and we'll show you how they work. Here we have the System 6 board set. As you can see, we have CPU and driver board connected together. It's really the only way to effectively test everything because they do function as a single board, even though they can be separated. Attached to it of my own designs here are the display bench tester, which gives you uh, the necessary information coming off your score displays. This little board right here uh, simulates the coin door diagnostic switches. Just off screen we have a board that simulates the input for the switch matrix. Over here uh, is a simulator for your lamp matrix. Uh, here this is an input for the special solenoids and various solenoid outputs as well. Uh, we'll go through these now one by one to show you how they work. Here we have your bench test display and the diagnostic switch inputs. The bench test display here shows you the player one score. Also your credits and ball and play display. This is configurable for six or seven digit uh, systems just by a matter of moving the connectors over to the other header, flipping a couple of dip switches, and then you'd be able to operate it with your, uh, your seven digit displays from either system seven or games like Alien Poker, uh, which is the end of the system six run. Here you have your uh, simulator here, which has your coin door memory protect, the advance button, and the auto up manual down. Now to get into the displays, first you make sure that all your switches here are down, hit the center button. Now you have a little bit of a glitch in there from the original Williams software. Move it back up, hit the button again, and now you're in your display testing which uh, cycles through 0 through 9 to show you the outputs of all your all your display information. Now we'll just leave that up here, press the button again and we are into your lamp matrix display. Well, this is the uh, lamp matrix board showing the uh, test sequence in progress. As you can see it's an 8x8 matrix which displays all the, all the lamps in your system. The uh, built-in Williams diagnostic here for the System 6 is actually kind of useless as it only shows uh, everything blinking at once. A lot more powerful when you get to the System 11 era where it, has an act, where it has a sequence to it. So what I prefer to do is actually power cycle the machine here to go into the uh, attract mode where you can get a much better view of the, of the lamps in action. Uh, as you can see you have columns 1 through 8 and then lamps rows 1 through 8 here. It's uh, when you have a, a faulty board, it's pretty easy to see either a locked on column or a column that's uh, that's powered off in this mode. Or sometimes you'll see a little ghosting or fogging across them. But uh, here, this is actually just operating normally in attract mode, uh, showing all all 64 lamps in the sequence uh, in their attract mode sequence. Now we'll hit this button again here. Uh, go from your lamp matrix test to your solenoid test which is going to sol cycle through uh, all the solenoids on the board, as you can see, cycling through the number there. Now uh, here we haven't actually started the uh, solenoid test sequence yet. I did want to show you uh, when you first power on a machine, you're almost always going to have one LED turned on here. This is solenoid 16, which is the coin door lockout. Uh, Williams used that to keep people from inserting money in the machines that aren't turned on. When we actually enter the sequence, you'll see two more LEDs come on here. This is your flipper power enable. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll see it happily cycling through the various solenoids in the sequence. It'll test all 16 of your standard solenoids here, and then six more up here, which is your special solenoids that are also uh, run through the CPU sequence. Now, this little uh, dip switch board here will actually also simulate the special solenoid switching, which is uh, part of the board there. Now, there is 10 switches on there, but there's only six solenoids. I usually just turn all 10 on, and sometimes these are a little tricky to get at. But you'll basically see uh, all but two of the LEDs are turned on here. That means we, all your special solenoids are okay. Turn all the switches off. You'll see them uh, turn off one at a time. Showing that uh, nothing is locked on here.
Another handy little trick in the solenoid test sequence here is if you move your right side switch back down and press the advance button, you'll notice that the, uh, the number there stops cycling and that's going to actually uh, continuously fire that particular solenoid, uh, pulsing it, not keeping it turned on. Uh, press your advance button there to cycle through the different solenoids uh, all the way through uh, all the solenoids present. Uh, if you're testing a System 7 machine, uh, just be aware that it will show solenoids 23 and 24 on this test, uh, but those are not present on the board. Those would be used on a separate expander board. Uh, as, you're, uh, as we cycle through the, um, through the numbers here on the display tester, like I was explaining here, you'll see one keeps blinking uh, continuously. And press your advance button, and it'll move to the next one and the next one. This will allow you to uh, continuously test a, a specific solenoid if you suspect a problem on that, uh, on that individual circuit. And now we'll move from your solenoid test to the switch matrix test. Uh, here as you uh, manipulate the switch test board you can see the various uh, switches displayed on the test. Here we have the switch matrix display. Uh, as you can see, we have 0, 3 on your credit display, which says we're in switch matrix mode. This has uh, it's an 8 by 8, meaning you have the 8 columns across the top, the 8 rows across the bottom. For WPC machines, there is a jumper right here that uh, will allow you to lock in that number 24 switch that it needs to, uh, to boot up properly. This was uh, cut down a little bit from my original design due to keeping costs down. Uh, future, I might have an, a full 64 switch board, but this is what I have at the moment. And it's pretty simple. You have column one and then hit uh, row number one here. As you can see, it shows switch number one is on the display. Or column three, switch, uh, column three, row six, so switch number 22. And this allows you to cycle through all the switches quickly and easily. Uh, on games such as Gorgar or non-multi-ball System 6 games, you can actually use this to, uh, to fully run a game on, on the system. Uh, later multi-ball games where it needs to go through a ball search sequence to start a game, you really can't get that in depth, unfortunately. Uh, that's something I'll hopefully be ad addressing when I come out with a future design, but uh, right now this is much more affordable uh, and also uh, available right now. Uh, lastly, we'll move from the switch display to your audits and uh, record keeping, which is cycled through, same as usual here, where if you have the switch in the bottom position, it goes backwards. Switch in the top position cycles forwards and uh, moves you through all your, all your audit information here. I hope you found my little video here to be informative and uh, give you a good overview of what my various diagnostic tools can do for you. If you'd like to purchase any of these or uh, have any other questions, uh, you can reach me at my website at www.siegecraft.us. Uh, this is what I hope to be the first of a number of videos covering diagnostic work on Williams System 3 to System 7 pinballs. So if you have any uh, questions or anything you'd like to see in a future video, also shoot me an email and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Have a nice day.